Let us start with Eliza, the technique, which is based on antigen antibody reaction. So the principle is antigen antibody reaction. This ELISA stands for enzyme linked immunosorbent assay and in this any disease which works on this antigen antibody principle or reaction can be detected using this technique. This technique was introduced in the year 1971 by a group of scientists, Angwell, Angwell and Polman. The second group of scientists which also gave the same uh, technique during the same period of time were Weeman and Skurs. So there were two teams which were working on this principle and pretty much on the during the same time both these teams, these were the two main scientists in each team, they gave this process of ELISA. Now let us exactly see what happens. There is a micro titer plate which is normally made up of poly Styrene. So this is called polystyrene micro titer plate. This plate has these kind of depressions and these depressions are known as the wells. In this the first thing that is done is antigen is adsorbed on the surface of this. We will take an example to understand each and every step so that it becomes absolutely clear. Suppose we want to detect whether the person is HIV positive or not, whether the person has this HIV that is the virus in its body or not. HIV is a retrovirus, it has RNA as genetic material and there is reverse transcriptase enzyme. So this genetic material is RNA. And the enzyme is reverse transcriptase. And this virus also has one more layer around it. The protein coat which we call the capsid. In case of HIV, there is one more layer. And this layer has special glycoproteins. These glycoproteins are known as GP120. The interesting part is that these glycoproteins are antigenic but still our body is not able to make antibodies against it. The reason is each of these GP120 they are masked. They are covered by a non-antigenic layer. And that is why our body doesn't come in contact with these antigens and if antigen doesn't come and stimulate the lymphocyte, it will not produce antibodies. So this GP120 remains masked most of the times. It gets unmasked only when the virus has to inject its genetic material into helper T cell. So say when the time comes or when the virus comes in contact with the helper T cell. Say here is the helper T cell. Helper T cell. Helper cells also have proteins on their surface and these proteins are known as CD4. When GP120 and CD4 they come close to each other this mask disappears and a channel is created. Channel means these two proteins they come in contact with each other and this is the path through which the RNA will be injected into the helper T cell and as soon as the genetic material has been injected into the host or T cell 
these again will separate these will separate and the gp120 will again get masked and this entire process gets completed in few seconds that means the antigenic protein of the virus is exposed only for few seconds and in those few seconds if this antigen can come in contact with lymphocytes and stimulate them then only antibodies will be formed and that is why if a person is HIV positive that means has this virus antibody production in the body takes a long period of time but if the person is HIV positive and this is where we are trying to test using ELISA whether the person is HIV positive or not. So we will take this uh, detection of HIV uh, as an example to study what happens or how do we detect using ELISA. So now what we do is we take the GP120 protein, glycoprotein as our antigen. So GP120 antigen is adsorbed on the surface or on the inner surface of the web let me draw this well slightly bigger so that we are able to see the exact process so this is the well and the gp120 antigen which we have taken gets adsorbed on the surface. This is the place where it is getting adsorbed. This is our first step. We add GP120 which is our antigen into this well. We will incubate it at 24 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. After that we will discard the sample. That means whatever solution of this antigen we poured into this we will throw it out. We don't see anything because these particles are very, very tiny. They get absorbed. Second step is now we will take the serum of the patient. Serum of the patient is taken. If that patient has synthesized any antibodies, those antibodies would be in the serum. Second step, we would add that serum here. Again, incubated for same 30 minutes at 24 degrees celsius and if that patient's serum has antibodies those antibodies would bind with this antigen because we are testing for a particular disease the antigen which we have taken is from the hiv that is the virus and if that person has that virus in its body then must have synthesized some antibodies these antibodies bind to these antigen. That means an antigen antibody complex is formed. Step number three, we use a specific enzyme. One such enzyme which is used here is alkaline phosphatase. Alkaline phosphatase is one such enzyme. This enzyme has a special property. It can bind only to antigen antibody complex. That means it will neither bind to antigen alone nor to antibody alone. It will bind only to the complex. So now next step we add alkaline phosphatase. Wherever there is antigen antibody complex our enzyme is bound. Again, after adding the enzyme, same thing, 30 minutes, 24 degrees Celsius, we have to incubate it and then we discard the enzyme also. This micro titer plate is then placed in spectrophotometer. The spectrophotometer is going to show us which wavelength is absorbed, which wavelength is reflected. And we know if a wavelength is absorbed from the visible spectrum, that means there is some colored product which is formed antigen antibody enzyme complex is a colored complex that means antigen plus antibody plus this enzyme complex it is a colored complex so if 
in our spectrophotometer result we get that a particular wavelength was absorbed or reflected that indicates that there was some colored complex formed and how was that colored complex formed for formation of this colored complex enzyme must bind to antigen antibody complex so enzyme bound to that complex how was that antigen antibody complex formed the antibodies came from the serum of the patient that means that patient has produced antibodies and those antibodies are against this antigen that is gp120 we took gp120 separately but this patient must have synthesized those antibodies against the virus which is in the body of that person so from this result we can conclude that the person is hiv positive many a times the result is not very clear so the patients are called for retest after maybe 2 weeks 3 weeks time by that time the patient must have produced few more antibodies and we would get more of these complexes the colored complexes and the spectrophotometer will give us a more clear result so simple antigen antibody reaction is what the principle is and we have taking we are taking the antigen for which we want to detect whether the person is having the antibodies or not serum from the patient and then a specific enzyme this enzyme is special because it binds only to antigen antibody complex this complex which is formed that is antigen antibody and enzyme complex is a colored complex and this helps us detect these kind of diseases we can detect other diseases also like even tb wherever there is this antigen antibody reaction taking place so this is elisa based on simple antigen antibody